Mark chapter 11. And when they came nigh to Jerusalem, they're not there yet, unto Bethpage and Bethany. So it tells you where Bethpage and Bethany is. They're not in Jerusalem. They're going to New Jerusalem. At the Mount of Olives, it gives you more detail of location. He sent forth two of his disciples, which two, we don't know. Mark doesn't record it. It says unto him, Go your way to the village over against you. Now, we'll, as a family, what we're doing is we're taking every chapter. We could run all the Matthew, Luke, and John, but that's, that's not what we're doing. We're just taking each chapter, each book on its own. Say, Go your way into the village over against you. Now, over against is near to. And as soon as you be entered into it, that city line. As soon as you get into that, 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 that village, you shall find a colt tied, whereon never man sat. I don't know what you call a fresh colt. He's unbroken. Loose him and bring him. And if any man say unto you, Why do ye this? Say ye that the Lord hath need of him, and straightway he will send him hither. They went their way and found a colt tied by the door without in a place where two ways met, and they loosed him. Now this kind of gives you a little bit of that story in Judges, where he said, the first thing I see, Lord, when I come home, I'll sacrifice to you. He was expecting something, a chicken come around the yard. The colt is tied right by the door, the porch. <laughs> I mean, we're reading times where the animals just ran free within fences. And certain of them that stood there said unto them, Why do ye loosen the colt? And they said unto him, Even as Jesus commanded it, they let them go. So everything that Jesus said happened. And they allowed to take the colt. Now, you know that Jesus doesn't steal. That's to be a violation of law. So reading more into this, that Christ does not steal anything, he asks permission, gets permission, and he would have to have it returned later. And that's not recorded. They brought the coat to Jesus and cast their garments on him, it would be a saddle, and he sat upon him. And many spread their garments in the way. Others cut down branches off trees and strawed them in the way. Here comes the king on a donkey. And a donkey in the Old Testament was the limousine, the Cadillac of kings. Here he comes. They're receiving him. But they don't receive him long. He doesn't bring the land into their control. He doesn't set up authority. He doesn't set up his kingdom. Rome is still in power, so they turn around and crucify him. We want a king in John chapter 6 is going to feed us, take care of us. It's not time yet. And they that went before and they that followed cried, say, Hosanna, save now. Save us from oppression. You know, they're looking for a, the Moses. We're oppressed under the Romans. Call us out. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. They want a dominion right now. Blessed be the kingdom of our father David. See the kingdom? See the king? That cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. They wanted a king. John 6.15 Get that. That's what. That's why they rejected Jesus. He didn't come there and smack Caesar in the face and kick Pilate down to the ground. And he did not judge Pilate. You think God? You think Jesus Christ, who is God, had the ability to judge Pilate? You think Jesus Christ could have? Well, he didn't. But you think he could have picked up Pilate off his throne, sat down on the throne, and say, "Who do you think you are?" Jesus had all power to say, hey, wait a minute, I'm the judge of all the earth. Who do you think you are? And that's what the Jews are looking for. 
put down the Roman government. Well, why should Jesus put down the Roman government? Look at all the sins they're in. Look how we saw. All right, he's, he was welcome. The Pharisees started giving him a hard time. And then his own home folks started giving him a hard time. Then his own family gave him a hard time. And then villages started rejecting him. And now, what a clause here. Oh, we, we love Jesus coming, and it's not going to last. We know the end of the story. Blessed be the kingdom of our father David, and cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, save us in the highest. Save us now. Jesus saves. But he's not going to save you if you don't believe. Get that one. He does not save the nation. Because they didn't believe. Later on, when God gives them a new heart as a nation, as a corporate, when God takes away that stony heart and gives them a new heart, it's funny how the Bible says a heart of flesh. <laughs> A heart of flesh would be more improvement than what they have a heart right now. Even the disciples have been recorded in two places that their heart has been hardened. You cannot be saved if you've got a hardened heart or a heart condition that's not willing to repent. You need to get that. You need to understand. When you get this easy believism and, and the junk that's going on today, just say this prayer. That's not... The answer if a man excuse me say what for with the heart man believes unto righteousness with with the mouth confessions made unto salvation with the heart man believeth you got things going on today let's have playtime let, let's have all kinds of fun let's have and then oh this child came up and said a prayer and they don't talk about sin they don't talk about judgment and Jesus has been talking about kingdom. Jesus has been talking about hell. Have we been reading that? Has he been talking about judgment? Hey, it's he just got finished saying it's better for you to cut off your hand, poke out your eyeball. He's been telling them what we're supposed to tell them. Hell is real. And they rejected. Blessed be the kingdom of our father David that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Save us. And Jesus entered into Jerusalem and into the temple. Man, he walks right through and goes right into the temple. And when he had looked about, when he had looked round about upon all the things, do you get that word? Look at all the things that were in the temple. Let me ask you just basic Bible study. What was supposed to be in that temple, in the courtyard? Two things. The yeah. Um, Raising altar. He walks in there. You, you, we already know that he's going to see tables, exchanges, animals that are being sold, caged animals to be sold. You know what you, you know what Jesus when he walked to his temple. You know what he saw. He saw a fair. He saw a carnival. He saw a ruckus. In temple, when he looked around about and upon all the things, and now the even times getting late was come, he went out into Bethany with the twelve. So Bethany's not far from Jerusalem, like I said. Um, I don't do it all the time. I should. There's times I do. You should be reading your Bible with a map and look. Oh, okay, there's Beth. Oh, almost every Bible has maps in the back. I know. It's just I. I've been thinking about. You can get maps that are set when you, you carry right along. Oh, like the ones Rachel got from home. Yeah, you know, you just it doesn't stay in the back of your book. You put it where you pull it out. That'd be the best thing. And then the best map to read about Jerusalem and all that, Israel, is get a map that tells you the mountains and valleys. Like I said, this is just no walking down a highway. This is climbing. So he's in Bethany with the twelve. Judas. We know what happens with Judas. And on the morrow, tomorrow, when they were come from Bethany, he was hungry, or hungry. And seeing a fig tree afar off, having leaves, he came 
if happily he might find anything thereon. Now, I don't understand because he's God. He, he planted the tree. He knew there would be no leaves. I read, I read that if all the figs after they ripen aren't picked, they will stay on the tree until the next season of Unless everybody in the town picked it up. Okay, the note here is, now get this, this is interesting. Harvest, which is usually after Passover. So there's got to be something on that tree, or should have been. Should have had some fruit. Because this tree would not have been picked until after he died, after the Passover. Somebody went picking. Late June and early September. Some say five days before Passover. Then, if that's the case, then someone's already come and harvest. No one left anything then. So the law said you were not supposed to pick that tree dry. So either if it was supposed to be after Passover, somebody didn't do what they're supposed to. A premature pick. If it's supposed to be five days before the Passover, nobody left anything. That's a violation of the law. Judah, summer begins in March. Leaves say, okay, wait a minute. Leaves say there's a fruit. Leaves say there's a fruit. If there's leaves, okay, if there's leaves on that tree, there's fruit. So the note here. Seeing the fig tree afar off having leaves, there's supposed to be fruit. Jesus knowing a lot of there's yeah. there should be something there for cleaning. Yep. And so somebody did something wrong by the law. So he cursed that tree so nobody could ever pick from it again. He came, if happily he might find anything there upon. So it will look like the harvest is before the Passover, but somebody left something for him. Oh, just give me a, a taste of a fig. And when he had came to it, he found nothing but leaves. And then the statement for the time of figs was not yet. It was fruitless. For the time of figs was not yet. I don't know what to make of it. I don't know what, anything about fig trees. Somebody who knows about fig trees and in this region, they would know what that means. He came to the tree, there was no figs. And Jesus answered and said unto it, To the tree. He answered the tree. The tree didn't say nothing. Yet, but the tree did say something. I ain't got no fruit. I have no fruit for you. And he answered the tree and said unto it, No man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. And his disciples heard it. And they come to Jerusalem. And Jesus went into the temple. And began to cast out them that sold and bought in the temple. Where do you find that in the law? And overthrew the tables of the money changers. Where was that in the law? And the seats of them that sold do doves. There's your vanity fair in the temple. There is your fairs in the temple. There's your cassette tapes, your CDs, your posters. Jesus comes in, what would Jesus do? He'd kick everything down. And would not suffer that any man, any man, priest, should carry any vessel through the temple. To the end of the sacrifice. Christ is going to the cross. And he taught, saying unto them, it, Is it not written? My house shall be called of all nations the house of prayer. But ye have made it a den of thieves. You know, he just told him right there. He's looking around. I mean, there's coins rolling around. There's animals loose. There are tables knocked over. And he's teaching the people. You see all this mess here? You were lied. You were deceived. They stole from you. He's rebuking everybody who's doing business in this temple by teaching the people. 
All these years you guys have been coming here and doing all this, you have been in the hands of thieves. Now that's not going to make a ruckus. And the scribes and the chief priests heard it and sought how they might destroy him. For they feared him because all the people were astonished at his doctrine. And Pilate says for envy. He's nailing them down. He's rebuking them. And they can't say, they can't come up to the people and say, well, wait a minute, wait a minute, this is false charges. Hold on. Jesus, shut up, you're wrong. Let's, let's do a little, they can't do that because Jesus is right and they know it. He's exposing them. He's exposing them. And they fear the people because the people are listening to him and Jesus is right. And people know today, I'm not saying every single one of them, but everybody knows that the, the field of news car salesmen and lawyers are known for their lies and deceivableness. It's known, but you've got to do business to them, don't you? You can't afford a new car. What do you, who you got to go to? The laws prescribed that three years, three times a year, you're to go to this place. Well, guess who's setting up shop? This is a form of Roman. Listen, you say too much about Roman. No, I come from that misery of Roman Catholic. I've seen family die and go to hell with the Roman. You can't just burn any candle. It's got to be from there. It's got to be. You can't have any priest come. There's a sacrament called marriage. And if you're not Roman Catholic, you know, we're not, we'll marry you, but we're not, we won't bless you. And if you leave the church or do anything against the church, Lord forbid you read a Bible or get saved, you won't be buried in our cemetery. If you don't get buried in our cemetery, well, the gates of purgatory are closed. And I'm dead serious on those teachings. They put you, and this is what the Pharisees, this is Roman Catholic Church, AD 33. Don't tell me about Constantine. And when Jesus said, remember, cast your burdens upon me, this is a burden. I'm going to just use even dollars. Let's say a dub costs $5, okay? I don't know, but just saying $5, even number. You, the Bible told you if you can't carry it and bring it with you to Jerusalem, it's too far, sell what you got, bind the money in your pocket, go to Jerusalem, and it tells you buy the things that you need in Jerusalem. All right, dub five bucks. That's an even number. You get to the to the temple. Seven dollars for the dub. No, no, wait a minute. Hold on here. There's another principle here. You're right about the ten dub. Seven dollars for the dub. Two dollar profit. But now you got to cash your your money from Roman money to Jewish money. That's ten dollars now. And now you're going to go home from Jerusalem. Now you got to cash your Jerusalem money into Roman money again, and now you just lost more money, $15. These people were mistreated. Jesus speaks of the sheep. Can you just imagine a bunch of sheep that are scabbed, uh, uh, diseased, missing legs, blood, scabs, and this is what the people were doing to them. Starving. And you know what? Some of these people knew it was true and they couldn't do nothing. What could you do? Now here's the only answer. There he is right there. And they can't, they fear these priests so much they can't do nothing. Remember the parents in with the blind man? Is this your son who's blind? Yeah, he, well, we're not going to say nothing because if we say something, we're going to lose our place, we're going to lose our job, we're going to lose everything, and we can't come to the temple no more. It's the same thing going on here. Is it funny? The parents, son, you defend yourself. We don't want to lose. And that's what's going on. You got to realize that Jewish people, it's it's hard dead set. If you come to Jesus Christ, you lost it all. When that church in Acts in Jerusalem was broken, all that, that's because everybody lost their jobs. You, you're a Christian now? Yeah, I'm a Christian. Get out of here. You can't do no business here. And when even was come, 6 p.m., he went out of the city. 
And in the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. This is the second day. Another gospel says it was dried up that moment. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it was dried up when they saw it, and then it dried up more. And Peter called, remember, said unto him, Master. That's a good, see, that's a good master. We saw them come to Jesus. Master. There's not, that means, that means Rabboni. That means teacher. But you can use the title as sarcastic as I don't believe it. Just, some people today, they're a PhD. They didn't earn it. Back when my grandparents and my, my father's generation went to college, you had to know four or five languages to get a PhD. Today they just hand it out like candy. I'm I'm a college I'm a college graduate, but the college courses I didn't I took didn't match the college courses five ten years ago. I didn't have to do no language. Thank God. Even though I love to learn language, uh, whither the way? Jesus answered and said unto them, Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain be thou removed now is Jesus a liar okay tells us see that mountain there see be thou removed and be thou cast in the sea mountain get up and go to the sea and shall not doubt in his heart but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass he shall have whatsoever he saith we all don't have the faith that we're supposed to have. Walk up to it. Never mind a mountain. Walk up to a tree. Say, tree, go out there in the ocean. It ain't going to happen. Why? Because I ain't got the faith. And today, merchandises, they, they'll sell faith, 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 faith. You ain't got faith. You ever have a moment when you're just alone and you're not thinking about anything and Satan just comes up, pops you? What, what, what if the Bible's not real? What if it's not true? You ever those moments where Satan goes, Jesus can't save you? I've had those moments. And that little bit of doubt and that there, see, lack of faith. We can do all things through Christ which strengthens us. That's what he's saying right here. I forget whatever I think the verses in Galatians is it but that I can do all things through Christ with strength in me it's the same thing being right here it takes faith it takes prayer and it takes serving God these disciples have been serving God they've been taking care of this and heart and heart and all that but they've been taking care of Jesus for three and a half years they've been loving and helping them guiding them here here's some bread start feeding. okay Lord they served the Lord. They did what they they gave up. Peter said, "Listen, we've given this all up." And you know what mountains they moved in the Book of Acts? Was Peter really faithful when, when God told him to go to Cornelius? No. I bet you he argued all the way there until the Holy Spirit had them speak in tongues. Then he, whoa. Wait a minute. I definitely got to stop fighting this one now. See, we can talk about faith, but do we really have it? I'll die for Jesus. Really? I've said this over and over and over again, and I hope no one who plans on torturing me will do it, but put me in a dentist chair. You know, if I ever did get captive, captive by Muslims or like that, and they put me in a in a dentist chair, you know they've been listening to my messages. Listen, I don't even have what it takes for a doctor to give me a little Novocaine needle without almost having an accident in my pants. But with the faith and doing stuff for God, you won't. Fox's Book of Martyrs were, was about faith and living for God. That no human person can put through all that they put through, like Jesus Christ. But when you do it in the Holy Spirit and in the work of God and in faith that you learn by serving God, by pain and suffering, you can go through burning faggots. See, Fox's Book of Martyrs is all living for God and doing right by God. It's not wavering. 
And this is what he tells his disciples. Because guess what's going to happen for these disciples coming up? The book of Acts. Jesus will leave them. Then their entire life will be faith. And look at the mountains they move. The whole earth, the Bible says, they were turned upside down with these men preaching the resurrection of Jesus. Paul shows up and he's preaching to kings and, and rulers and pagans at their God at, at the Mount of Mars. I can preach on the streets in Daytona Beach because of the faith I have in the gospel. And they come again to Jerusalem. As he was walking in the temple, he's back in the temple. One of the, some of the tables was still knocked over and all that. The commotion. One of the hey, there's a guy. Ooh, you he should have been here yesterday. You know, you missed the temple yesterday, and you missed Jesus coming in and tearing up the temple. Now, I very say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, shall no doubt in his heart be, verse 23, shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he has. It's Jesus said it's possible, but with man, it's impossible. We read that about the riches, the rich on the God, we can do anything. Man, that's the trouble. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. Now with James, you're not going to get lustful, coveting desires. That's not the case here. That's not what that's not what going on. Oh, I pray for a new car. I was like, Lord, I need a car. Eh. It would be nice to get a brand new car, but I mean, the people who are like, I don't want yeah. a Mercedes Benz. And some people say, I want the world. Well, Jesus is not going to give you the world. Yeah. That just defies, you know, Christians, oh, Lord, give me the world. Really? You didn't read Matthew 4, who can give you the world. And he's talking to the disciples here, the 12. He's not talking to us. You know what those disciples are going to have to go through in the book of Acts? Lord, we need an open door when all the Jews have closed the door. Okay, move on. Yeah. And when you stand praying, ooh, there's a position. I'm going to tell you right now, this may shut you guys. I never get on my knees to pray. I'm sorry. If I ever get down on my knees, I have a hard time getting it back up. Something falls on the ground, I have my daughter pick it up. You can stand praying. You can kneel and pray. You can sit and pray behind your steering wheel, which I do much. Just don't close your eyes. You can pray anywhere. Oh, schools won't let me pray. Oh yeah, okay. You want you want to pray before you kneel in the school cafeteria? I'll show you. All right, here's a here's a hamburger in front of my hand. Ready? All right, start eating. I pray. I don't need to sound the trumpet. Jesus said. I can't pray in this spot. Yes, you can. But God is deaf. He, he turned off his hearing aid. Did you guys speak loud? You can receive the heart, the, what's in your heart. You knew what they were saying yeah. about him when they didn't even say it. It was in their head, their heart. Is he, is, again, the, the Pharisees would put rules on you. Religion puts rules. Always had to pray on your knees in that bedtime. What? I mean... Is that my time to pray? God, wait a minute. Hold on, God. I got three more minutes. Uh, Joe and Psalm 1 is praying, right? Okay, is it my turn now? On my knees. Oh, wait a minute, Lord. I'm sorry. I have to go pee. Pee on the tub. You can pee on the You can pray while you're peeing. You can pray in the tub. You can pray anywhere. That's the great thing of our God. He's awake. He's alive. The phone's going and never recharges. And when you stand praying, forgive. Uh oh. There's a problem. If you have aught against any, that your Father also which is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. Notice he, notice he tells the disciples here, your Father. He's been saying, my Father. Now he turns to the disciples, your Father. 
Reconciliation is this verse. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father, which is in heaven, tell you which Father is, forgive your trespasses. You ain't got the Father that's running around, what does Job say, to and fro the earth? He's a small half. He failed. And they come again to Jerusalem. He's going in He's going in and out, in and out, in and out. And as he was walking in the temple, he's back in the temple, there come to him the chief priests and the scribes and the elders. They won't leave him alone. And say unto him, you can just imagine the disciples, oh, here they come again. Watch this, boys. He said unto him, by what authority does thou these things? What authority? What things? You see those tables over there? You broke that, that that holy divine dove table over there. You hurt Rabbi Salami. I don't know if that's a Jover, Jover kosher meat or anything like that. You hurt his feelings. <laughs> People in synagogue were talking about that and, and ruined my message I had about washing hands Solomon couldn't get all the doves he's out there trying to get them now lost money what authority gives you to do these things how'd you like to have me walk into a Baptist church and start and then they'll get mad and upset what are you doing I'm showing you the Bible says this is wrong Christmas tree, all the yeah. altar, tearing down all the PBS decorations. Yeah. But I don't do that because I have been rebuked by so many preachers when I've used the Bible. I, you know, I'd take it to the Lord and say, Lord, listen, I pray that church gets right, but you know what they're going to be like? They're going to be like the Pharisees and scribes. They're going to be upset. So I use these videos, I use these audios, and if somebody will say, Patrick, you hear what this guy says? It says. This word gets out. Ooh. Now watch this. Who gave thee this authority to do these things? The authority came from the word of God. The law. Remember how they keep, you know, they keep bringing him the law, the law of marriage, uh, giving money, uh, this, everything about the law. If a man dies and leaves a wife and he's had seven, what, what's, Gives you this authority. Moses gave you the authority through God. And Jesus answered, said unto him, now "This is. Are you not supposed to ask a answer a question with a question? Is that supposed to be like? Yeah, like I forget what the word is, but that you do not. The thing is, you do not answer a question with a question. Ready, Jesus, grammar one hundred and one. I'll ask and say unto you, I will ask you of a one question. Jesus, have you got English right? It's not proper, Jesus, to ask a question when you were asked a question. Answer a question. You have offended us. Now answer their question. And what she says, I will also ask a one question. Answer me. They want an answer, and Jesus said, I'll ask you a question, now answer me. Demands an answer, and I will tell you by what authority I do these things. The baptism of John, which they didn't believe in. It was from heaven. Was it from heaven or of men? Answer me. Was it God ordained, or was it something that man thought of? Now put that down with everything today that involved in the church. Is it right or is it wrong? Did God ordain that or did man ordain it? How's that? Well, we're doing it for Jesus. Would God approve of it or would man approve of it? Well, it's, it's getting people to Jesus. Is it God's way of getting people to Jesus? Or is it man's way to get to Jesus? My thoughts are, is it God's thoughts or is it man's thoughts? There's three things in this world. It's either God, Satan, or man. 
That's it. And he says, of men or of God, you know, Jesus, is it right or is it wrong? And he just told you right there, what men say is wrong. You know it's God ordained. John the Baptist was prophesied in the book of Isaiah. It has to be of God. And we read somewhere else where he was talking right, talk about John the Baptist. He said that even he was for he was prophesied in everything he did. I believe that was in Mark earlier. So yes, it was of God. Man has a religion. And they reason with themselves. They're actually thinking about it, saying, If we say from heaven, he will say, Why then? Did you not believe him? Ooh. Well, we say if it's of God, then why didn't we get baptized? Remember, Paul was a Pharisee and later became an apostle. Paul had to be baptized of John in order to get that office. And that's true. I don't know where Paul is through the life of Jesus. But another thing is you have to walk with Jesus to be an apostle. And then you have to see the resurrected Christ. That's the three offices of apostle. And Paul fits all three of them. And you got to wonder where Paul is. And every time they say, well, you know, we say of heaven, why did you not believe him? And Paul would be thinking, if he's here, I don't know. Well, I was baptized of John. And you got to wonder if Paul, when he's killing Christians and all that, he's doing, you wonder if he's got a conscience. It's like, He's battling between he's done right and he's doing wrong. He's doing wrong, but he knows to do right. And he says that about his Christian walk. That which I do, I do not want to do. And that which I do, do want to do, I don't do. He will say, why then did you not believe him? But if we say of men, they feared the people. For all men counted John that he was a prophet indeed, saying they did not believe John was a prophet. So either we're going to get slammed by God from saying it's heavenly, or we're going to get slammed by the people if we don't say it. <laughs> they don't believe in either or. They answered and said unto Jesus, We cannot tell. And Jesus answered, saith unto them, Neither do I tell you by what authority I do these things. Bye, fellas. Let's go. And in that question that he asked them, he did answer their authority. We know it's of heaven. It's of God. What I did was of heaven. It sure wasn't man. Would man want Jesus to go in there and kick everything down? Absolutely not. They hated it. There, there are men standing there. They hated it. So we are coming to the final days. He's clean house. The Jews want a war to end all wars. They want their nation back. They want their land back. And it doesn't happen. 